Hello, everybody, and happy holidays from Nerd to the Third Power, your one-stop shop for all things nerdy and awesome. I am your host and Jedi Master, Dr. Gonzo. With me, as always, in this epic quest of awesomeness is our resident crack shot pilot, the cat. Cat, how are you doing this week? I just thought of that joke that's currently going around, that, that video of a guy, and he's got a lightsaber, and he's at, like, Disney Disneyland or Disney World or whatever, and the stormtroopers walk by, and the one goes... If you're the last, or if there's a last Jedi, it's not you, or something like that. (laughs) I just remembered what a sick burn that was. Mm. (laughs) Okay. All righty. And we also have with us our resident Huttese crime lord, Mike the Birdman Dodd. Mike, how you doing? That's right. I rule from the shadows of Nalhutta. So uh, believe me, I am excited for this. (laughs) So, in case I haven't made it painfully obvious, uh, this is our Star Wars episode. So, tonight we're going to be discussing Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, the capstone to the Skywalker saga, and uh, the last Star Wars film uh, planned so far that I'm aware of, unless there's been something announced uh, that I'm not aware of. They are doing Knights of the Old Republic. They just don't know when it's coming out. I think they've said maybe 2022, I think, but I'm not sure. Ooh, that might be interesting. So yes, uh, so the, that, that's good. We're, we've uh, we've so we've both seen the movie, uh, some of us multiple times, and uh, we've got opinions, and uh, we'll be discussing those. Uh, but of course, but of course, today there is procedure follow, so we're going to begin real quick with a couple of fast ask a geek questions here. And uh, let's see here. First question here. This one comes from Mark, and uh, it is to all of us. And it's uh, if you were to have a lightsaber, what color would it be? So uh, let's start with you, Cat. If you were to if you were to have a lightsaber, what color and or style would you have? Um. I don't really know really what the colors are supposed to mean if there's some deeper lore um, in the in the books about the crystals or whatever, but it, teal, teal would be cool. Okay, and would you do a single blade or a double? A, a single, because I'm already more likely to, like, like laser my own hand off. <laughs> like, you don't need George Lucas to write it in there, like, in the script. Like, I would just do it if I had a double blade. <laughs> okay. Mike, what about you? Color and style? Style would be, think of Darth Maul's double-bladed, but not actually double-bladed, just a longer hilt style. Um, color would be pink. Uh, just because I think that's a really vibrant color. I'm a big fan of how that's looked in some of the games. However, though, for falling established universe colors, probably green would be my would be my pick. But if I could go fan servicey, definitely pink. Okay. Uh, well, I'm 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 an old school fan, so I'd uh, I'd go a regular single blade with a yellow blade. Uh, if I were to go uh for for something of my with something of my own, um. So yeah, so sing, 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 single blade style, yellow blade. Um, now, have you, have you, uh, Mike, Mike? I know that you've seen this because you sold me one of them. But uh, Kat, have you ever seen uh, Saber Forge uh, sabers? Uh, yeah, because I've been to a comic book convention. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> just the way you. Said I mean, they're that. just they're at all of them. Um, <laughs> they're they're everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 saving up to get a uh, to get a replica of Luke Skywalker's saber from Return of the Jedi, but it costs like fucking six hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, they they had one at Comic Con many many years ago, and I don't know that I've seen it since. But they had one that was um, the Sword of Omens from um, Thundercats yes! as yes, a lightsaber, I and I thought that that was the coolest thing. I think we've mentioned that before on this show, but like that to me is still like the coolest mashup. That's pretty bitching, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, and then someone, someone sent me a picture of one, um, that, uh, they'd had the basic hilt made by Saber Forge, but then they'd machined on the extra bits, uh, but it was a lightsaber version of the Master Sword from the Legend of Zelda, and I'm just like, oh, man, the Triforce is with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, that, 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 that saber that I'm gonna buy is gonna cost like 600 bucks because I'm fucking insane. I can't just get the bone stock one. I have to get all the bells and whistles. Well, of course. And this is why you don't give me money. <laughs> All right. And let's see. Second question here. And uh, this one comes from Riley. And uh, they ask uh, what we, Mike, what you and I think of uh, Jedi Fallen Order. So, uh, Mike, why don't you go real quick on this one? 
I don't have a lot of opinions on it yet because I got this game for my birthday all the way back in October. Obviously, it came out in November. I haven't played it yet, though. After this show, I am actually going to sit down and play it. However, I've already spoiled 90% of it for myself anyway. Um, I like what it's done. I like the fact that it took the Dark Souls like combat and brought it to Star Wars without it being brutally difficult, more like Sekro's Shadows Die Twice. Um, I think it's a cool addition to canon. Um, I think the second sister storyline would have been a lot more interesting uh, to follow as a protagonist. But uh, Respawn did an amazingly good job and showed EA, hey, single player Star Wars games sell. So maybe we should make more of those. <laughs> that is encouraging, yes. Um, I have played it, and um, I finally wound up putting it down uh, and just watching uh, a, a playthrough online because, like Mike mentioned, it takes a lot of the uh, it, it takes a lot of its cues from Dark Souls, but it doesn't really fully commit to it. And there are some things that uh, that it omits that I feel like that formula really needs. So it's hard for me to get into the gameplay of it. Um, story wise and presentation, I mean, it's a gorgeous game. And the story is really intriguing. And one, when I when I was when I after I finished my watch my playthrough, I was like, okay, yeah, this is I w- I would like more of this, even though it's not really my cup of tea gameplay style. And uh, yeah, it is encouraging that EA is actually publishing single player games and having them stand on the on the strength of their single player instead of filling it with fucking loot boxes. So yeah. So okay, and yeah, that's all the Ask the Geek questions that we're going to do this week because we have a lot to discuss with our discussion topic, and that is Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is this is what everything's been building up to over the past what seven years? Twenty thirteen was when Force Awakens came out. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. So over the last little over half decade, this is what everything's been building up to. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, determine if uh, this was worth it, or uh, or you know, if the force is strong with this one, or if it uh, you know, I don't really know where to go with it. Let's just get just just jump right into it. <laughs> so, uh, Kat, let's start with you. What uh, what what are what are your, what are your general thoughts on uh, Rise of Skywalker? Um, I'm. Thank God we're talking about it because I'm real tired of talking about it and reading about it. And, and I know we're, we're, we're all pretty tired of it. Um, I really feel like this movie was never going to make everyone happy. Um, and, and the, 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 the filmmakers have said, you shouldn't try to make everyone happy because you just won't succeed. Um, and, uh, I am one of the people who came out on the side of enjoying the film. I thought uh, a lot of the the character stuff got rounded out. Um, it did, however, feel really disjointed from the Last Jedi. Like it felt like a good rounding off for the Force Awakens, but less for the Last Jedi. Um, it it did like conclude a lot of threads, um, and it put it made things in the Last Jedi make more sense. But it's that it makes it stand out even more. It just makes it feel more disjointed. And I liked The Last Jedi. Um, So I'm coming out on top of I enjoyed all three films for the reason that I am easy to please when it comes to Star Wars. I I don't have the lore knowledge. I never read any of the novels. So all I have to go from are like one book, like the one book that I've read which was the Force Awakens novelization. Oh, there was a there was a prequel um, that I read, and and um, and the movies, and that's all I have to go from. And I really feel like it did a nice job of of capping out a lot of stuff, homaging a lot of the original films, and um, setting up a, a whole new world if they wanted to do more. <laughs> okay, Birdman, what about you? What are your what are your general thoughts on the film? Um. Okay, allow me to preface this. I have 30 plus years of EU knowledge. And yes, I realize that's been all hand waved away by Disney. My problem is J.J. Abrams. Um, The Force Awakens, I thought, was promising. It had some it had some problems for the most part because it was a new hope redux. But I'm okay with that for the most part. The Last Jedi, I didn't really care for. I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Mm. This movie just felt like an apology after The Last Jedi. Like, one of the things that I read about this today, one of the characters I really liked in The Last Jedi was Rose. 
you realize her sister had more screen time in The Last Jedi than Rose did in the entirety of Rise of Skywalker at just a little over a minute and 30 seconds. Just saying. Um, it just felt like so many characters got done dirty and just things just miraculously happened. Like, one of the big things that Rise of Skywalker did was they brought back Emperor Palpatine, which is cool. I like, <clears throat> I enjoy the Emperor. But you know what did it better? Dark Empire by Dark Horse in the 90s. Um, here it's just, he's back. How? I don't know, because of plot reasons. And it's just, it just, it pisses me off because it feels so disjointed. If you asked, and I can ask you guys this, if I ask you to elevate or pitch me or tell me the stories of the prequels and the OT, you can probably do that in under 30 seconds to a minute. Try and tell me the story of the new trilogy in that same context. Not as easy, not as hard. The new trilogy felt very disjointed. With Rise of Skywalker, there were some genuinely cool moments. I'm glad... Chewie got his due, he got his medal. Lando came back, that was neat. Um, Foe, or Poe and Finn. My God, why aren't these people a, a couple? I'm just saying, because that would be awesome. Um, and just, there were parts of this that I liked, parts of it that I absolutely fucking loathed. Um, I didn't like it, I didn't hate it, but I just felt 40 years, 42 years, and this is the conclusion... I'm not satisfied. I'm thinking the true succession, honestly, in my opinion, was when Timothy Zahn did his novels back in the 1990s, Hair to the Empire, Dark Dark Empire Rising, or no, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. Those were my 789, in my opinion. So think of that what what you will, and uh, let's open the floor. Well, hang on. I still have to get my, uh, of course. my opinion here. Yeah, so... Um... I I did not like this movie. Um, the, my biggest issue with it, and and we'll get into it as we discuss the story, is I didn't feel like there was there was very much in it that was new. A lot of the a lot of the story beats, stuff that had been done before, um, and felt like the, the long short is I felt like this movie was kind of built on fan service um, without having a strong core of its own. And what was there that was new? Um, I felt like there was a lot of very baffling story decisions that were made. Um, but we'll get into those as we, as we start discussing the story of this film. Um, but there, there, this, I, I just, I did not enjoy this movie. It took a, it took a hard left for me right at the start with, with that opening scrawl. Um, and to, to put this in context, I am a huge, 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 huge star Wars nut. I mean, star Wars pretty much was my childhood outside of video games. Um, so, like you know, it, it it I I this this film really disappointed me, and it what what and it, it's really disappointing because I genuinely liked the Force Awakens, and I was excited to see what they were going to do with it. Uh, I had my problems with the Last Jedi, uh, mostly centered around the fact they used that stupid, sickly child plot structure, um, which I discussed in detail in that review. Um, but I was still, you know, it was still at least trying to do something different. This movie, I feel like it was. There's nothing in here that I hadn't seen before. Um, but you know, like I said, we'll, we'll get into that as we start breaking the movie down into its component parts, uh, starting with, uh, the story. So, uh, Kat, why don't you give us a a, a quick recap of uh, the story of this film? Holy crap. It is a convoluted story. (laughs) It's actually not convoluted. It's just a lot. It's a lot of like, we have to go to this planet to do this thing and go to this other planet to do this other thing. And that is a lot like uh, The Last Jedi. So in in this um, particular film, okay, let's see if I can remember all of this. Uh, So it kind of opens with Kylo Ren, who um, is going around and just like murdering the fuck out of everybody because um, a a message has been transmitted and it's Palpatine and he's back and Kylo Ren doesn't want anybody to threaten his power. So he's just going around just murdering like all the people in the world to try and find more information about Palpatine. And then he goes and he finds Palpatine and Palpatine's like, dude, I'll give you like a whole army. I'll give you an empire if you just kill that bitch. And uh, so <laughs> Kylo Ren's like, I'm on it. I've got it. Don't worry. Just, you know, 
just give me a couple of days, me and my knights, who we haven't seen except like once in a flashback in The Force Awakens. We got this. And uh, so then he's going to go off and find that bitch, uh, Ray, <laughs> and uh, going to go hunt her down for Palpatine, quote unquote. And then on the other side, you've got uh, the Resistance. Um, and they're running around and they found out uh, that there's a mole uh, in the First Order. And they're like, oh, that's really important. Spoiler alert, it really wasn't. Um, but uh, so they're like, oh, we, we, we've got a mole. This is really great information, but we're still all going to die all the time. And uh, Ray's off training to do Jedi shit because uh, we need a Jedi. And there's really nobody else who is a Jedi. And so, like, there's a little bit of tension because she would be better served, you know, being out there flying the Falcon and being all boss. Instead, she's like there lifting rocks, trying to commune with the dead. Um, and she's not. So there's a bit of tension there. And then um, they find out that, OK, yeah, Palpatine's back and he's uh, in this place. He's in a place, um, the MacGuffin land. Like, it's just it's like <laughs> like this impossible to to find planet called Exegol. Yep. Was it it was yeah, one of those words that I feel like everybody pronounced it just a little bit differently. So I couldn't quite get a handle on what it was called, but Exegol. And so the only way to get to Exegol is to f- use a Sith Wayfinder, of which there were only two ever made because MacGuffins are, li- MacGuffins are like that. And um, <laughs> so she's got to find one of those. Well, Luke had a lead on where one was. So they all got to go. Uh, the, the, the gang's all back together and they're going to go find this other planet where Luke had figured out there was a wayfinder and this all connects back to Ray's backstory um, where like they're finding this wayfinder, but she kind of recognizes the ship that it was found on and all this other stuff. And um, while they're trying to find this wayfinder, they find a Sith dagger and uh 3PO can translate it, but he's not allowed to say the words because it's a banned language. It's, it's like, it's like the council of Elrond and like, and all starts speaking <laughs> the black speech and that's hella bad. So that's all terrible. So they can't like figure out what this dagger says. And then um, they need to get off the planet real quick because the bad guys figured out that they're there. And, um, <laughs> This is the most rambly I can. There's just there's so much that happens in this film. No joke. Yeah, so, we're not even we're not even in her recap. We're not even in uh, 45 minutes into the film yet. No, this <laughs> no, is like a solid even. 30 first minutes 20. in. Yeah. <laughs> so the First Order figures out that they're on this planet and she's like, oh, I got to go fight Kylo Ren because he's that bitch for her. Like they got to they just got to be like fighting in every moment of the film. Um. So she's going to go fight and then Chewie gets captured and she's like, no, I'm going to like force bring that plane back down. And he's like, no, we're going to let it go. And then she fucking Palpatines the goddamn little the freighter that was taking off the little the, the dinghy. <laughs> and, and, and it blows up and she's like oh no I'm gonna shriek as loud as I possibly can and um, like like kills Chewie holy shit and uh, they're like oh we gotta escape and uh, then they are like we still have to get this dagger translated uh, and it's in 3PO's memory bank so we gotta go to this other planet where Poe knows a guy who knows a guy who's gonna be able to like open up 3PO's head and and pull out the information and then while they're on this other planet <laughs> still going while they're on this other planet um, they run into like what is clearly Poe's ex-girlfriend um, who like used to like run Spice which definitely is like drugs question mark yeah Um, yeah uh, as a critical role fan this is entirely something else and very very funny under a complete different circumstances so anyway they they managed to um like oh sadly sadly tragically reset 3po's memory banks and that allows him to translate the stuff and then they're like okay we know what we got to do now but then the first order attacks this planet because they're just like tragedy magnets who drag attacks with them and then so ray has another fight with kylo ren because that's like 90 percent of the film and uh they figure out that oh chewie's alive chewie's alive and he's on that ship holy shit that's great so they gotta go rescue chewie from one of the sh- from kylo ren's ship and uh they all get on board and they're 
fighting and um, they get Chewie, get his stuff, get the dagger back. And Hux is the mole, um, which I would have liked them to have done a lot more with. And they all get off again. And then oh, what happens after that? Uh, from that point on, they've got the dagger. They go to uh, Endor, to the ruins of the second Death Star. Uh, and yes. they, they and Ray discovers that there is that uh, there that the Emperor had a vault on the Death Star, so she basically uh, infiltrates the, the ruins, finds the second wayfinder, but then because you know r- bad things always come in threes, Kylo Ren tracks her there as well, destroys the wayfinder, and pulls the emo high school high school bullshit. Uh, the only way that you're getting to the Emperor is with me, and so they have a lightsaber battle on the the uh ruins of the death star um and ray manages to escape and uh i I don't recall exactly how she manages to get to exical on her own um she basically steals kylo ren track it back because he kylo ren gets distracted in the middle of this fight because leia it just like just works and pieces out yeah, like she's like I I've, I've got to distract my son from killing this girl and um so Leia dies and they're like oh shit Leia just died and so like both of them are like oh oh my mom just died. Yeah. Both of them are thinking that. Um yeah, um and then yeah, Ray steals uh Kylo Ren's ship uh and then leaves a trail of breadcrumbs to Exocol um nope. where she dis- where she discovers Shh. that she does not go to Exegol. She goes to, to Luke's Hermit Island. Oh, yeah, that's right. She goes to the Hermit Island and is like, I'm going to peace out like Luke did because I'm really afraid that I'm going to become like a Sith or something. And then Luke has to have a Force Ghost pet talk with her and is like, bitch, get over there and do this thing. Um, <laughs> because in all of this, um, Ray has found out that she is, in fact, a Palpatine. That yeah, she's she Palpatine's is. granddaughter. Yes, she is Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter. Her father was Palpatine's son. And and then all I could think the whole time was who would fuck Palpatine, but I guess that's neither here nor there. And uh, so Ray's like, I got to peace out before I turn into a Sith. And then Luke is like, go go kill him. We don't care that you're a Palpatine. Uh, The Force lives in you now. This is how it has to be. And she's like, oh, you right. And then like, she gets Luke like force ups his X-Wing and she's going to go fly off. And she sends out a transmission to um, the resistance saying, here's how we're going to get to Exegol. Just follow me. And then everybody goes to Exegol. Literally everyone. Everybody in the goddamn universe goes to Exegol. But yeah. only after Lando and Han- or Lando and Chewie go round up some allies because they wouldn't follow Leia's call for help. They peace out for 30 minutes and they come back with a fucking fleet. Yes. So, uh, but also while while they were on um, the, the Endor by the ocean and everything, they found a bunch of ex-stormtroopers like Finn who were all defectors. And then they bring them along too. Yeah. And then um, they, they, they go to Exocol. They have this big, uh, not really a space battle, but a sky battle. Uh, with everybody in the goddamn universe versus this hidden Sith fleet that of uh, Star Destroyers that's been basically tucked away. And every single one of those Star Destroyers has a planet-destroying weapon, which they, they show on the one of the planets that Ray was on earlier, because, again, death follows them everywhere. Uh, and on the planet's surface, uh, Ray and Kylo Ren have a confrontation with Palpatine, and Palpatine's basic plan is is to do a spirit hop where he wants to have Rey kill him so that he can basically take over her body, uh, which, as Mike mentioned, is a plot line taken from Dark, the Dark Empire comic, uh, which I will say I will say this, because uh, I absolutely hated Dark Empire, uh, I will say this, they actually handled it a little less squicky than they did in the, in the Dark Empire comic, because on the comic, Palpatine's plan is a spirit hop into Leia's oh, unborn child that oh, yeah. Rey was carrying in her womb. And I'm like, oh, that's some dune mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that that's gross. Um, so yeah, and um, so they do, but uh, he also discovers that he can basically drain the life force out of uh, Ray. Um, 
Because then, during this whole time, Ray has figured out how to transfer some of her life force into into like a healing thing. Yeah. Like she can um, heal stuff with her hands because of the force. Yeah, and Palpatine basically basically forces that and it's like, oh no, screw that. I don't need you. I'll just drain your life force. Um, but then there's a whole uh, you know, because all the Sith are in him, all the Jedi are in you. So she basically does this, uh, you know, reflects the, her, his force lightning back at him and disintegrates him, and then that, and then the the fleet gets destroyed. The first order is destroyed, and then the whole thing ends with Ray going to Luke's house on Tatooine to bury his lightsaber, and she decides that she's going to call herself a Skywalker now. And that's the the basic story beats. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that was that. a lot. That's because that film was a lot. Yeah, the pacing of this film, uh, as if you haven't figured it out from our uh, from our recap, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this film, and the pacing is very off. The first like hour and a half of this movie, it, it I don't know, was it just me or did it feel like they were just moving from one set piece to another without taking any room to breathe? You, you couldn't know, breathe in this movie. You know, no one can criticize the movie of being boring or only visiting like a, a, a frozen or a um, a desert planet because they were like, we've heard your criticisms. You thought The Last Jedi was too slow and we've only revisited the same kinds of planets. So we're going to throw you at like eight different planets and you're never going to... St- you- there is no bathroom break in this film. It is literally just breakneck speed the whole time to get as much done as possible. Yeah. So, um, so I guess, uh, Kat, what are what are what are your 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 general thoughts on the the story and the the beats that it hits in this film? Um, I thought it was fine. Obviously, it had the pacing issue where it gave itself too much to do, and they really could have like knocked one planet off and simplified everything. Um, and I don't know why they tried to shove quite so much into it because it just, it felt, I don't want to say like padding, but it just felt like it was, it just felt like it was a little too convoluted. Not in that, like, I mean, every movie has their MacGuffin where they have to go to, go to a place, get the thing that they need and then go save the day. Like most films have some sort of bullshit MacGuffin like that. So I don't mind the MacGuffin of the, the Sith Wayfinder. I just thought it was too complicated to get to um, Exegol. Uh, it could have been so much simpler. And it really, it should have been. There's like like one whole planet that they could have just skipped and it would have been fine and you, you wouldn't have really lost anything. They could have like done everything they wanted to do on like one or two planets instead of like four. Yeah. But otherwise, like, the story itself is fine. Like, to me, it's fine. It's a bit much, but they, you know, they didn't want to torture us and make it, like, a four-hour-long film. So. Okay. Well, uh, for me, I have three major complaints with the story. Um, for and, and they all kind of bleed into, into each other. Uh, the first major complaint that I have is the revelation of... Ray being well. First off, Palpatine being back uh, to begin with uh, had me rolling my eyes. Not just because it 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 it. There, there's two main reasons, big reasons why I don't like Palpatine coming back. The first reason is it's very obvious to me, at least, that that's a patch job for the fact that Snoke got killed off in the Last Jedi, and they even sort of lampshade that. There's like Palpatine has this whole thing where it's like you know Ray, where where Kylo Ren's like, oh, I killed Snoke, and Palpatine's like, uh, I was Snoke, I made him. You know, I was every voice in your head. So they kind of, so now it's pretty much made every, all the mystique and mystery that was surrounding Snoke in the first two films uh, meaningless. And leading into that, my second major complaint is, you know, the whole arc of the first six movies was about essentially, you know, bringing balance to the Force and destroying the Sith. And that's what happened at the end of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, the the Luke was there in Return of the Jedi to redeem his father and turn him back to the light side, but literally everyone else in the story, their goal was to kill Palpatine, either by destroying the Death Star or you know killing him directly. Their whole shtick was trying to kill Palpatine. So for Palpatine to just come back with and and either have never never either just come back or having never been dead, to me. It feels like everything that happened in the first six movies is now 
completely meaningless. It feels like it was for nothing. The good guys didn't win. You know, to to m- make a comparison, it felt like if they made a a ninth Harry Potter book, uh, and it turned out Voldemort had come back and he had seven more Horcruxes, and the Death Eaters have taken over the Ministry of Magic again. <clears throat> what was the point of everything that came before if it's all just been reset back to back to square one? And the idea of Palpatine having children that just that just gets more uncomfortable the more I think about it, like. <laughs> And hilarious. It, it no, not hilarious. Like I, I'm, I'm genuinely disturbed by the implications of that because he is not a character uh, who feels any love for anybody but himself. So the only way for him to uh, have procreated, um, and it, I'm not going to go any further down that road because that's I, not a road I want to go about. That's not something I want to think about. Genuinely, I'd like to think he made a test tube child. I, that that that's the only uh that's that's the only I I hope that's the explanation that they finally reveal it because the I don't want to think version the other... is really even more uncomfortable. Yeah, it really is. Um, and the and and then we lead into my major complaint of this movie, which is there's almost nothing new here. Almost every almost all the story beats in this film are things that we've seen before. You know, the hunt for the Sith Wayfinder. Okay, that's the search for Luke's map in The Force Awakens. Uh Ray being Palpatine's granddaughter. Okay, that's just Luke, I am your father all over again. And even that kind of is rehashed twice over with the the whole the whole ben, the whole Kylo Ren trying to turn Ray to the dark side. It's again, it's a rehash of the 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 Luke and Vader relationship, except with the added uh the added the added thing uh where it's hinted that they're like supposed to be soulmates and actually just before kylo ren dies and he redeems himself ray fucking kisses him and i'm just like uh no so you're telling me that this guy who's been a, a fucking emo stalker jackass for three movies and uh, a war manages, criminal Don't and a war that. criminal manage manage to 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 win this girl's heart no that shit didn't work in high school it's not going to work here and i just thought yeah, it was just, it was very, you just, no, I did, I did, couldn't buy that. And I actually audibly, I actually vocally groaned when that happened in the movie in the theater. Um, but it's like, you know, okay, the, uh, the vision that Ray has of her dark side self on the Death Star ruins. Okay, now we're back at the cave on Dagobah. Okay, Luke showing up to give a, a pep talk to Ray uh, on the island. Okay, well, that's Yoda giving a pep talk to Luke on the island in The Last Jedi. There's so little of this movie that hasn't been done before and it feels like this movie doesn't this movie story doesn't have a strong a strong core of its own and then there are other other story decisions that are made that are just utterly baffling to me why is hux the mole you know his motivation is just the most petty ass chicken shit i've ever heard i don't need you to win i just need kylo ren to lose those are have you paid attention to hux for the last two films that is literally his character he is a little dirt bag and i love him i thought that line was pretty funny but yeah it, but it's 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 it, it it's petty chicken shit and then the things That's that they hooks. do that that That's are just consistent writing so and then uh okay so you're gonna tell me that Le- that general leia hero of the galaxy can't start can't scare up any allies to help in the fight against the first order but lando who who the galaxy hasn't heard from in years can get every single fleet in the galaxy to come to Exocall? I'm not buying that. Um, well, in, although, defense, in fairness, if maybe maybe Carrie Fisher had gotten to finish her scenes, there might have been something for that. Yeah, That's I have to... She didn't get I, to finish filming, so we'll never really know what that was going to be. Yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a pass on that one on the grounds of Carrie's death. Um, doesn't mean I have to like it, though. And then, um, let's see where I was like... And then the things that they do that are new there there are these moments that are supposed to have emotional weight to them but then they just get undone later like uh chewie's death you know i was that that was the point where i thought that the movie was actually was actually going to start turning around for me i was like oh shit you know they 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 kill off this beloved character maybe this is where they're gonna finally stop messing around start getting serious oh no it just turned out he was on another on another transport well okay that was pointless okay well now they're gonna have to erase c3po's memory to get uh this to to get this data Okay, all right, well, that's, you know, an emotionally impacting scene. Here's a character that I love who's going to, you know, go away. Then not only do they do, turn him into basically, you know, the stupid comic relief for the rest of the movie, but then that memory wipe is undone later with a literal Gilligan cut, which it just, there's so many 
things in this movie that either have been done before and done better, or I felt like didn't need to be in this movie because they were they were undone. And then, um, you know, like a, like a great example, going back to what Mike said, uh, the whole thing with Rose. I mean, I was you know as much as I didn't really like how her character was executed in the second film. I wanted to see more of her and where she was going to go with that. And then she shows up for all of like 90 seconds in this film. And I'm like, going to go study the specs of old Star Destroyers. Bye. That was all she said. Yeah. So it's like, and the thing is, is like, and I, and I hate to bring up the last Jedi because it, uh, because the, the discourse around that has just been awful. And I know that I'm probably going to get some people yelling at me for this. But so it feels like the reason why this movie was so disjointed and badly paced and so many baffling disorder decisions were in this film was because they were trying to spend a lot of time undoing what was done in The Last Jedi. It feels like this, that this was an overcorrection from the previous film. I, I don't agree know, with that. So, but yeah, it's just like, totally. it, it, it's... It's it's and and you know what? But you know what? I'll I'll, I'll give credit to J.J. J. Abrams. He's 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 been a class act as far as receiving criticism. Like Kat said, I mean, he's come out and said, like, look, I knew I wasn't going to make everybody happy. So, but those are my main criticisms. Birdman, what about you? You hit almost every point that I was going to say. I mean, the story. It's just it's not the whole problem. The whole problem I feel with the the sequel trilogy is it started out promising. And for this to be the capstone of the Skywalker saga, eh, this is the best you could do. Like my problem is bringing back Palpatine. You said it right. Gonzo, you just, you hand waved out six movies beforehand. And now he's just suddenly back because reasons Snoke was a little weird, but had the potential to be an interesting bad guy. And then you just offed him in the last Jedi. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just, there's so many little problems where I think the Rise of Skywalker should have been something really impressive, monumental. It should have really said something for 42 years of cinema and storytelling. And this just felt like a wet fart. Certain parts of this movie land, like there are some really cool moments in this, but overall it's just like, what the fuck, man? It's like someone handed JJ and whoever his scriptwriters were, Okay, here's the expanded universe from 1991 to current. Wrote, read everything through once without comprehending what they were reading. Scribbled down those notes in crayon the second they finished reading it. Handed it to him. JJ said, okay, cool, cool, cool. I like this, 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 and this. Handed it to a scriptwriter and said, okay, make it work. And this is how we got Rise of Skywalker. And, and like you said, they're overcorrecting for some things that happened in The Last Jedi, which divisive to say the least it's not my favorite it's not my least favorite but there's just so many things here that just don't land and i know i'm supposed to feel for these characters and i thought like when you said when they killed chewy all right the film's got some balls all right cool it's uh, it's hand waved away oh shit oh man they're gonna kill through and who gives a shit he's back um it's just it's so lame for a movie that wanted to take for a trilogy that wanted to take chances by killing Han Solo and you just hand wave two major deaths in one movie. Come on, man. Like there should be something more here. And the fact that this grand bad guy comes back, who's been this overarching villain for nine movies now, and he gets undone again by force lightning. Um, just it baffles me. And the fact that I'm sorry, when he went into the death star, um, reactor shaft, he was fucking atomized. Um, Ian McDermott recently did an interview where he said to George Lucas, I thought I, I, I was dead. And George's like, yeah, you totally were <laughs> weird. Isn't it? Um, so I don't know, man, just, this isn't, this isn't the ending that I wanted. I left so disappointed and pissed off. And it's not because I hate J.J. Abrams. He's an all right filmmaker, I guess. Um, but this isn't my 789. This is not my conclusion, the Skywalker song. I mean, I like Ray. I even like Kylo Ren, despite how much of a whiny, pissy baby he is. Because that lightsaber is fucking badass. Um, and I like Ray's lightsaber, to say something. That I think we that's see cool. all of like three seconds. It's made out of her staff, which I think is really cool. And the fact she has a yellow kyber crystal is a whole new set of lore questions, but I digress. But, uh, man, just, man, 
I'm done. <laughs> and the, the 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 whole last act. I mean, it 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 felt to me like bad fanfic. It really yeah. did. Okay, all the Star Destroyers have a planet killing weapon. Okay, um, Palpatine is not only back, but he can also force lightning everybody on the planet at once. Uh, it just it 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 just. It's somebody's bad RPG campaign. That's what it felt like to me. <laughs> yeah, I've seen and this before. We we we've seen most of this movie before. And um, it sucks. And 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 now and 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 then someone told me something after after I saw this movie the first time that really pissed me off is that there apparently is an explanation for how Palpatine came back, but it's only in expanded universe materials. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Expanded universe, ma- expanded universe material is supposed to expand the source material. It's not supposed to inform it. I should not have to go see. I think I said it when, in, in, when we, when in our review of Solo. Actually, I shouldn't have to read, you know, a comic book or a, no- or, or, or a, a, you know, an outside comic book or novel to understand what's going on in your film, which is the spine of your story. You know, yeah. I sh- and I, I absolutely. I, I absolutely hate the fact that I apparently have to do that to find out how the hell Palpatine came back. It's like, you know, you know, the first six films, even even with the prequels, okay, yeah, they're for all their issues, you know, you could watch those movies and understand everything that's going on. You didn't need to read any expanded universe material to understand, you know, why, for example, uh, Count Dooku is working with the Separatists in Episode 2, or, you know, where General Grievous came from for Episode 3. None of that was important. You didn't need to, and even with the original trilogy, you didn't need to see Anakin's fall from grace and how he became Darth Vader to understand his character arc in the original trilogy. But the fact that now so much of what goes on in this film, I can only understand if I've read the expanded universe materials, really irritates me. I genuinely want to know more about you know who this character is that uh, that you know Poe apparently had a history with uh, when he was a spice runner. But we don't see any of that in the film. There is apparently uh, the uh, one of the defecting stormtroopers, the, the lead one, the black lady, is apparently supposed to be Lando's daughter who was kidnapped by the First Order. You wouldn't know that in the film. It's only in the you expanded universe materials. That from the film. You know, I well, I didn't infer that at all. When uh, you, you know what I inferred? I remember the one hearing scene? this too. You know what? You know what I inferred from that from the one scene they had together in the film? I thought he was flirting with her. I thought he was hitting on her. I thought he was going to try and convince her to go on like you know a galaxy hopping adventure with him. I did not get a familial relationship at all. So it's you know it's they, like I said, there's just That's so terrible. much. You know, there's there's so much in this film that's just so baffling to me. Now, and they also just kind of hand wave over Palpatine's son. That's a pretty big fucking deal, especially so, after I mean, especially after the last movie. They made a big deal about how her parents were nobody. Anyway, Kat, you're about to say something. I was just going to say that the last time we demanded an explanation out of the Force and bullshit like that, we got midi chlorians. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Like it. There's only so much that you can, like, explain without just saying, I wanted a TV show. Because what you're saying is, I want a TV show. Because the only conceivable way to do all of the things that you've just described, it cannot be done in a single film. It is a TV show. Or a comic book series. Or, or, or a comic or, book or, series. Or, or in two any films. case, it was never all the things that you wanted to get out of this film were not conceivably possible to execute in a single film. I don't know. You look at Avengers Endgame. Look how much that pulled off. But that also Avengers had twenty three films had, of there build. There was two up. movies. <laughs> And that, and, that, and that and that and that and that and that brings us back to brings us back again to Last Jedi. The, the the Rise of Skywalker felt like two films that tried to cram itself into one. And I feel like that that's the result of there not really being a unified vision for how the trilogy was supposed to go. Um, and it brings us back to again this this is this feels like an overcorrection for the Last Jedi. Now that I've thoroughly lashed this film to bits, there are there are some nice things that I that I do have to say about it. And uh, the big one is how this movie handles Carrie Fisher and Leia. I feel yeah. like that they 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 did uh, the best they could with Leia, and what they did do, they did really well. And every moment that uh, that she was on screen, she has you know the 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 the, the perfect presence and gravitas. 
and her impact on the film i felt i felt was done really well and so props prop, props to the to the filmmakers for doing so well with leia and sending her character off uh, in a way that 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 did her justice, I feel like she was one of the she was one of the only characters that got done justice in this film. Yeah, and and to me that was actually the most important thing that they could do in these films was to make sure that they didn't uh, to make sure that they handled Carrie well, because um, they basically spent three movies uh, axing each one of the main original characters, um, and you know. I, I'm willing to bet if if uh, Carrie Fisher hadn't died, Leia would have obviously like made it and survived and been the last of a generation to like see this through to the end, um, and that would have been really beautiful poetic symmetry. But um, like to to delicately handle that situation, I thought was was so tricky because immediately after she died, the studio said we will not we will not CG her. We will not recast her, and um, like both of like certainly CGing her would have been such a tempting thing for a studio to do, to not have to change their scripts around, and they committed to it and they stuck with it, and I really really love that they they did it well. And another thing that I really liked, um, and this go- this goes in the film's presentation, is I like that as Kat mentioned, we got to see some different world biomes this time around. We got to see some some worlds that actually felt alien. Uh, we even went to a desert planet that I actually liked, which I've made vocal my dislike of, of desert planets as sh- shorthand for alien because I've always found that lazy. But we so they go to a desert planet this time, but we also get to see some of the alien culture. They land in the middle of this of this this festival of ancestors, I think they called it. And I was genuinely interested to to, to see this and and learn more about. It. I was like, oh, this this is cool. If there wasn't this world you know destroying plot going along i'd like to actually st- stick around and learn more about these people and uh the the, the little girl who asked ray about uh her family is just adorable not quite baby yoda levels of adorable but she's up there um one thing i i did like about this is i did like a lot of the lightsaber fights and there were a lot i'd be very curious to know if the fight choreographer was the same one that they got from the prequels which was nick galliard i think was the fight guy's name um, they're pretty cool. Like I said, I've always loved the look of Kylo Ren's saber. Daisy Ridley looks really cool when she's swinging around her lightsaber. Um, John Boyega as Finn, I think he is a wonderful actor. I think he put in a great performance. Uh, Oscar Isaacs, I think, is the guy that plays Poe, right? Yeah. Uh, him, I really like. Um, I like pretty much any scene that he's in when he gets a chance to really just kind of talk he kind of steals it i feel um a lot of the space battles were cool even if they were kind of goofy at times um and i like adam driver as kylo ren i think his performance is really really good this despite what he's given to work with um it's neat plus i like the idea of the shell of the death star being on endor even though I'm sorry that thing was atomized, but okay. Um, yeah, the, there were some cool looking set pieces and locations. Um, and it was nice to see Luke again. I, I'd say even more than seeing Luke again, it was nice to see Han again. I expected to see Luke again because I expected some Force Ghost bullshit to happen. And, but it was nice to see Han Solo show up. Um you know, just not as a force ghost, but just like as Kylo, as Ben's conscience, basically. And they they did this wonderful moment of him reenacting, essentially, the scene where he kills his father. And this time he makes the right choice. And I thought that was such a, like, a nice, lovely parallel for um, Kylo Ren's character. Because I did not hate his character. I thought that he had wonderful character development. And, and, and it's taken three films because this is not like, oh, he's a bad guy and suddenly he's a good guy. This was, he had like tremendous doubts and weaknesses throughout the first film and even more so throughout the second film where he was very close to being pulled to the light. And, you know, and this was him. The third film is finally casting aside Kylo Ren to just become Ben. And it was just, I thought it was, so subtly but brilliantly done that he just looks different 
just by like throwing his hair back a little bit and not wearing the big cowl and cape and everything like he just looks completely different as Ben Solo versus Kylo Ren the way he carries himself he gets like a little comedic moment and you're like yes I see a physical transformation that is just so subtle and I just thought that that was really great and then they ruined it by making them kiss um because yeah. that shouldn't have happened. This is not just me saying my ship didn't sail. This was like a, look, they might have feelings for one another, but this isn't the time or the place. Or, or like, really, like, just, you could have completely not had that and had a much better ending. But, like, those heterosexuals gotta throw them kisses in there. Otherwise, how will we know that characters care about each other? Did you, when you saw that scene in the theater, did you throw up the what the fuck hands? Because I did. I, I, I did. literally went gross, but uh, you know, that's me. Um, I did. And then, and, and then I, and it, I just thought of something else that, that another problem I have with the story of this film. So if you remember back in The Last Jedi, the whole, the whole arc throughout that was it, 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 it didn't, you didn't need to be from a dynasty like a Skywalker. You didn't have to have a blood, uh, relative who was powerful in the force to be to be powerful you, you know the strength in the force could come from anywhere and then this movie comes along ray is palpatine's grandfather granddaughter well that whole thing got thrown out the window well yeah because that never made sense to begin with in films that are about a dynasty like these films were always about the skywalkers skywalker family and to say that oh she's ray from nowhere she's nobody that was inconsistent I wanted her to so bad to be like Obi Wan's kid somehow, some way. <laughs> I mean, we all wanted that, but that student. also would not have been good writing. Yeah, that's o- true. Obi Obi Wan's o- only Obi Wan's probably the only character who's more sexless than Palpatine. <laughs> that's kind of disturbing in its own way. But Ewan McGregor's a boss. So is Al Guinness. Um, yeah. But still, yeah. Although um, I did, I was happy to see, although I know it'll get cut for the Chinese release, uh, the lesbian couple at the celebration at the end. I thought that was nice. Um, I think she was one of the like A-wing pilots or something. And that's my favorite ship. So go A-wing. Yeah. <laughs> Which we could discuss the the... Yes, it's nice that there was a kiss, but yeah, why didn't Finn and Poe get together? Or... I know, right? <laughs> like that's I I ship every ship in this, like except for Raylo, which I'm okay with. Like Ben and Ray versus Kylo Ren and Ray, like that to me is like a slightly more cohesive ship. But I don't really ship it because I've been shipping um, Finn Ray from the beginning. Because he actually, like, super has a crush on her, and it's very obvious. And he spent, like, a film trying to say something to her that never got addressed. And that is my biggest problem with this film. It's like, two two times he's like, Ray, I have something to say, and then, nothing. Although, supposedly, what he was going to tell Ray is, oh, by the way, I'm Force-sensitive. Why would you hide that from him? That would have been okay! Even that would have been okay, because it's been obvious from the beginning that he's Force-sensitive. He just needs a teacher. Exactly. Hand this motherfucker a lightsaber, give him a fucking training manual, and a weekend. Come on. It's it's another thing, is that I, I have... Of all the things that they've done dirty, is, like, not putting a lightsaber back in his hand at all. Mm -hmm. Because he handled it pretty well considering he'd never had one before in the first film and they were clearly going to lead him down that path of he is also going to be a Jedi and then they just like spent a whole film doing nothing with him being force sensitive or a Jedi and then they were like oh yeah he's definitely force sensitive that's you know that's where we're going with this and there's a lot of potential for that but really it was such Ray's story that they just couldn't deal with more stuff yeah, Finn, Finn is a character that I, I feel like they did, they, they they basically, you want to talk about inconsistent character writing. Okay, so the first film, he defects from the First Order to do what's right, and he's 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 ready to do what needs doing with Resistance. Second film, Bro's a fucking coward throughout the whole thing. I mean, Finn throughout the whole Last Jedi was just looking for the earliest, ex- the earliest excuse to bail. And then this film, he's back to being, you know, the, the courageous Resistance fighter that he was in The Force Awakens. I'm like, 
Again, it all, it, it, it all comes... Watch it The all... Force Awakens, though, because, like, literally the first thing he does is, we can't fight the First Order, we have to run. I, I, I... I remember him having that moment, but then at the at the at, I remember him kind of coming around at the coming around. It's because he met a girl. Point. Yes. <laughs> I'll, but like I said, I just I don't I. Again, it all comes back to so much of this movie. It's just an overcorrection for what happened in the Last Jedi, which I think now at this point we're just kind of going around in circles. So let's start wrapping things up by giving our final thoughts on this film. So, uh, Kat, let's uh, start with you. Your final general thoughts on the Rise of Skywalker and uh, the new trilogy in general. Okay. Overall, I loved the trilogy. Um, it obviously has major problems, and most of them stem with the the the, the big turn of, of the Last Jedi, which again I still liked, but it is a problematic film. Um, I think the movie has a lot of issues. I think a lot of the issues that people raise are really because they're looking at. Star Wars through such rose colored glasses that they don't see the original films were extremely flawed and share a lot of these same issues. Um, and we just ignore the original trilogy's issues and focus on taking shits all over the new trilogy. Um, but again, I actually really liked these films um, and I really liked the new one quite a lot. I, I did manage to get to see it twice uh, before recording this. Um, and I really feel like, despite it being a wrap up of the of the Skywalker uh, arcs, I guess I think it does leave a greater universe open because now there's more possibilities. Like there's more Force sensitive people. There's there's more possibilities. I think than than what we were left with with previous. Uh, trilogy that they could do so much more with new characters now that they've wrapped this up um again a, a problematic film this one i don't think it's as problematic as people are making it out to be i think people are just a lot less forgiving with this film than they are with others because it had an impossible an impossible standard to meet uh like it, it could never reach the high bar that people have put up for it so um but I enjoyed it. I, I really would like so much more with these characters. And I'm really sad that it's over and I don't get more with these characters. I know there'll be, there's books and, and, and comics and everything. And maybe they'll drag an animated series out of it. But I would love so much more. Okay. Birdman, what about you? Final thoughts on this film? <sighs> well, it's okay. I guess. Um, there are some cool parts in it. I'd say it is worth seeing in theater because it will be one of the last big event Star Wars movies for probably a while. The Star Wars franchise will go to bed for at least two to three years until they do either Knights of the Old Republic or something else. We won't see Star Wars Episode Ten until at least 2025 or beyond that. So see this in theaters. Do your best to because you're going to want that memory temper your expectations to talk about the trilogy as a whole again it's okay i guess it's got some really cool and some genuinely cool characters i like ray i like finn i like kylo ren i think there's some really cool ideas in here the problem is they're never brought to the levels that i've come to expect from the star wars franchise and maybe those expectations are impossibly high from 30 plus years of eu which has been discarded um but that being said, Star Wars as a franchise is still remarkably powerful. The Mandalorian is the best thing Star Wars has done in years. There's Rebels, there's Clone Wars, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there. And like Kat said, I want to see more with these characters, be it in books, comic books, or whatever. I want to see Rey potentially start her own Jedi Temple like Luke did in the new Jedi Order trilogy by Kevin J. Anderson in the mid-90s. So... Maybe we'll see that. Who knows? So overall, see them, moderate your expectations, and uh, try and have fun with it. Me, I... The Force Awakens got the new trilogy off to a really good start, and then it, it Last Jedi kind of felt like they, they set a bomb off under the deck, and this film was the cleanup. Um, as, far as, as far as this film itself, I, I, I did not like it. There, there There's... Like I did, without like I said, there, there's there's so little in here that hasn't been hasn't been done before. 
Um, this movie really needed a stronger core of its own, and I, 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 I feel like it's been denied that. Um, but it just, like I, said, I just, I did not enjoy this film. Um, but as far you know, it's it. I, I didn't dislike it enough to forswear Star Wars. I'm still a huge Star Wars fan, and I'm looking forward to to seeing more from this universe. And I'd I'd like to see more with Ray, Finn, and Poe. I'd like to see uh, where they go with this, and hopefully. You know, they'll get treated better in the expanded universe than they were done in these films. Uh, but anyway, but now it comes the part of the show where we give our final ratings on this film. As always, our scale from best to worst is see it now, wait for matinee, wait for D- wait for cable, don't even bother, and Brian's rating, fuck this movie. So, uh, Kat, let's start with you. What's your final rating on The Rise of Skywalker? Um, I'm definitely a see it now. I saw it opening night uh, at like 6 6- PM because I'm a grown up and I have to wake up early. And um, uh, I really enjoyed it. I definitely think that if you have enjoyed the previous films, uh, that you will enjoy this one and you should go see it now. I will add a caveat that I have seen a lot of people posting that they aren't sure if they want to see it based on the reviews that they've read. And I would say go and fucking see it and make your own goddamn opinion. Like, don't avoid seeing it just because some there's mixed reviews like avoid the movie cats because it has bad reviews don't avoid no, a, see cats <laughs> don't avoid a star wars movie because it's got mixed reviews like don't do that just you know make your own opinions about that but don't yeah d- yeah like just go see it or don't but don't sit there and waffle about it all right birdman what about you I'm going to say wait and see it for a matinee simply because it is an event thing. It's a cultural event. People are going to people are going to say, "Did you see the last Skywalker movie?" Kind of like how we saw the first one back in 1977. So yeah, go see it, make up your own mind about it and uh, try and have a good time. Just try not to think about it too much. Uh for me, I'm going to say I'm going to say wait for Cable. Uh, I'm not going to say don't even bother because it, it, I, at the very least it's worth seeing how this ride ends. Um, but I'm going to say, you know, wait for Cable, wait for it to come out on Disney Plus because you know it's going to be there. Um, but it's not something that you absolutely need to go out and see immediately. So that's that's my final rating. Uh, wait for Cable. And so with that, that is our final show of uh, 2019. Uh, we hope you guys had a happy holiday and that you have a happy new year. We will see you guys in 2020. Uh, and, uh, cause I, I know, cause I've gotten emails about it. We are going to be discussing the Mandalorian when we come back. So, uh, yeah, so that is coming. <laughs> so, but, uh, for now we're going to be taking our customary holiday break. So we will see you guys in uh, late January of 2020 for next year of nerd to the third power. Thank you as much for tuning in. We hope you guys have a happy new year. As always, I'm Dr. Gonzo. I'm the cat. I'm still Mike Dodd. All right. We'll see you in 2020. Taka, play us out.